Good afternoon. How is everybody this afternoon? Are you all okay? Excellent. This is good to hear. Well, I am thrilled that of the 20,000 voices, you decided to return for a follow-up conversation. And hello, 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 hello. My name is Naomi Thompson, if you have not met me. I am the Associate Vice President of the Office of Community, Equity, and Diversity, and also known as the Chief Diversity Officer here at the University of Rhode Island. And I am thrilled that we are here with a follow-up conversation to 20,000 Voices. I think most of you have been to 20,000 Voices. If you were not there, you will know that the reference to 20,000 Voices represents your voice here on campus. It represents a rough estimate of the students, faculty, and staff who uh, occupy and are part of the community here at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, much of this session will be facilitated by the class of um, Anne-Marie oh, Anne Vaccaro, oh, that was a slip, um, and the work of many other folks. But first, I just want to acknowledge the committee who worked very, very hard to bring about 20,000 voices. And I just ask that you bear with me because their names warrant recognition. So the team of folks who worked on developing the concept of 20,000 voices include Abu Bakr, who is part of the uh, brains that brought about the idea of open space here on campus. Uh, in no particular order, uh, Michelle Fonce Barrows, Emily, or Emma Montague, Dan Graney, Emily Goupil, Cindy Sabato, Carrie Hicks, Jerry Holder, Racine Amos, Melvin Wayne, Laura Beauvais, Pamela Rowland, myself, um, Sarah Couch, Anne-Marie Vaccaro, who really went above and beyond, Annie Russell, and Annie Kozar, or affectionately known as Annie M, folks who really, really went above and beyond, as well as Katrina Dorsey. From Anne-Marie Vaccaro's class, you will meet many of these folks, hopefully, because they're presenting, but I wanted to give a special Thanks to Anne Marie's class. These organizational development students who developed these wonderful uh, proposals and recommendations and facilitated many conversations to give the Division of Community Equity and Diversity tons more work. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish them well as many of them are planning to graduate and move on to greater things. And bear with me because some of the names may be a little challenging to me. And if I mispronounce your name, you correct me. So I'm going to start with Dana Bahuniak. Yay! Okay. And Mayalis Bustos. Are you here? Mayalis? Did I get it right? Yay! The hard one's out of the way for us, right? Um, Abby Campbell, John Carl Cruz, Margarita de Grasa, um, Will Frost, Kelly. No, now is it Th Thomas Kelly or Kelly Thomas? Thomas. Thomas, see? It just came out wrong on the printout. Sorry. <laughs> Ashley Mountlen Font. Yeah? Oh, I'm doing all right. Anthony Mom. Ma'am? Where are you, Anthony? Did I get it right? Good. Uh, Joe Mercadante. Okay, then the heads are nodding. Good, good, good. Uh, Emma Montague, Brian Neptune, Jen O'Neill, Megan Payne. Sarah Potricos? No, you're just humoring me. Potricos, okay, good, good, good. Brianna Sacucci and Aaron Schnapp. Yeah, all right, this is good. Thank you. So, they deserve the round of applause for all of their work and really an individual and personal thanks for all of your efforts of processing the information, of meeting with individual groups, and generating these wonderful ideas. So I don't want to take too much time, uh, but I just want to leave you with a few thoughts that from this work, those of us who will be left behind after these wonderful graduate students go on and graduate, we must engage in this work together if we want to make progress, and there's lots of work to be done, as you will see. And our fearless leader, uh, President Barack Obama, once said, 
Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are those that we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So the cure for all of these inequities and challenges lies within each one of us. And so I call upon you who are in this room to get involved, to help us out, the folks in community equity and diversity, to begin to address many of these concerns. The last quote I want to leave you with comes from Desmond Tutu, who said, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. Thank you, and go Rhodey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The purpose of today is to serve as a follow-up to the 20,000 Voices Open Space meeting. After that meeting, the university community was invited to join subcommittees which were formed to continue the dialogue. Members conducted benchmarking to determine best possible practices and see how other schools provide services, programs, and structures around each of the topics. Our job now is to report out to you the recommendations that have come out of these subcommittee meetings. These are not the personal feelings or desires of the presenters, but they are the recommendations that emerged from the faculty, staff, and students at URI who volunteered to participate in these subcommittees. And they are just that, recommendations. Not a list of things URI will do, but ideas compiled by the community for the administration. Also know that what is said today will not be the full recommendations, but simply an overview. The full written report has been presented to the Chief Diversity Officer and other senior administrators. <laughs> I hope you enjoy what has been prepared for you today. Okay, my name is Erin Schnapp, and with Sarah Patrikas, we've worked with the Building Bridges Across Student Organizations. Our first recommendation is to create an annual retreat for the student organization leaders to encourage communication and collaboration between all URI student organizations, including Greek Life, Student Senate, multicultural organizations, and unrecognized clubs. Through benchmarking, these three institutions have some type of retreat. Uh, Bowling Green State has a student leader retreat, San Diego State has an Aztec Core retreat and IUPUI has a student organization leadership retreat. In order to do this retreat, we would need the personnel to facilitate it, as well as the funding. Our second recommendation is to create an, an incentive for the collaboration between student groups that differ um, from one another. So some universities that have these programs are Purdue, University of West Florida, and Temple University. When students collaborate together, some are provided cash, and others are provided awards at the end of the year. To do an incentive program, we would need funding from the Student Senate. Our third recommendation is to encourage organizations to have either faculty and staff advisors or to meet with student involvement staff on a regular basis to encourage the collaboration and communication. Different universities that have such programs are James Madison, UVM, North Dakota State, and Montana State Bozeman. To encourage the advisors, we would need URI faculty and staff who are willing to be advisors and we would also need to develop a training program for those advisors. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marguerite DeGrasso. Along with Will Frost, we worked on funding and support for multicultural student organizations. Our first recommendation is actually to develop the Multicultural Leadership Council which is comprised of student leaders, students, faculty, staff, and it's to serve as an information pool, uh, advocacy group, and a funding source for students. Uh, institutions that have programs uh, like the council are Vanderbilt University uh, and Iowa State, along with other institutions. Our resources needed uh, to make this recommendation possible would be a designated staff person to chair the MLC, 
as well as allocated funding for the MLC to be distributed to multicultural student organizations. Our second recommendation is uh, assessing multicultural student needs and the center's services to determine if additional uh, staff is necessary. Uh, institution that does this is Iowa State. Uh, the Multicultural Student Programming Advisory Council serves, has a chairperson who serves on that and delegates uh, all the information for students. Um, resource would be uh, funding and staff time to develop, administer, and uh, analyze the assessment, as well as funding for uh, the possible staff person after that assessment is made. Our final recommendation is to develop an annual multicultural leadership summit. Um, this is, would provide relationship building and create an opportunity for students to explore cultural competencies um, among student groups. Um, institutions that also do this type of work is University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, Florida State University, uh, both uh, hold summits that include that, type, include that information. Funding sources would, we would need funding for sources for the annual summit as well as faculty, staff, and students to facilitate the workshop. Good afternoon, my name is Thomas Kelly. Uh, I work with Abby Campbell on the subcommittee for neurodiversity at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, neurodiversity can include neurological differences uh, ranging into the wiring of the brain. So our first recommendation was to divide, define neurodiversity for the University of Rhode Island. Uh, with this definition, we could then develop a resource page linked to disability services, the CED office, and national and local organizations to provide the best practices for working with neurodiverse students. Part of the benchmarking we did was the University of Maine Center for Community Inclusion and Disability Studies, which has an elaborate list of resources for the community at large. The resources that we would need for this recommendation would be staff members to collect resources in a collaborative effort with web communications to create a web page. Our second recommendation would, would be to train faculty and staff members on topics of neurodiversity. Once training faculty and staff members, we could develop a mentorship program. Uh, a benchmarking that we did is similar to uh, the Change the Culture grant at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, and University of Vermont Access Office. What this would do is allow mentors to train faculty and staff members within departments and for the campus community as a whole. Are the resources that we would need for this recommendation would be funding and DSS staff time to develop and implement training sessions for faculty and staff mentors and faculty and staff volunteers to serve as mentors for multiple years of service. Our final recommendation would be to create a session on neurodiversity within URI's Diversity Week to raise awareness and provide support. The benchmarking we did for this was Syracuse University, which offers a neurodiversity symposium, a one-day program. It's in its second year and developing for the summer of 2013. The resources we would need for this is DSS staff time to create a presentation proposal. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Amy Phelps Lee, and along with Heather Maselli, um, we are both PhD students at um, the URI RIC um, PhD program in education. And so we were helping out because there weren't quite enough of Anne Marie students to go around. Um, we um, ran the Committee on Inclusive Pedagogy. And we have two recommendations. Our first is to employ a full time inclusive excellence instruction director whose responsibilities include leading inclusive excellence instruction program design and implementation, promoting integration across the university related to cultural competence, and conducting a comprehensive and ongoing needs assessment. Uh, we had ample conversation in our committee about the fact that a full-time position at URI would probably be very difficult to come by, and the committee was adamant in recommending that this needed to be a full-time position as historically so many other um, fabulous efforts had not been properly funded and it was absolutely necessary in order for this to actually happen. Um, the benchmarking we did, we actually took a, um, a job description from the California Polytech State University Inclusive Excellence Program, which is based on the AAUP accreditation standards. 
Um, we also looked at the University of New Hampshire's engagement and inclusion program, Ball State University's program that is similar, and the um, Professional and Organizational Development Network in Higher Education, which is the um, organization providing guidance on professional development for faculty. The resources required, obviously, would be a competitive salary and a full-time budget line. Ongoing advisory committee support, because we felt that we had started to collect a very good group of people who could very um, easily guide the, um, the purposes of this, um, of this position. And integration with existing support programs, like the instructional development program and online teaching, as well as many other existing programs. Recommendation number two is a much smaller yet equally important um, recommendation, which is to develop a clearinghouse or website of electronic and print pedagogical and curricular resources, research and knowledge to support faculty interested in developing a more inclusive pedagogy or curriculum for their course. Um, our benchmarking, this is a very short list of the many that existed, but the University of Massachusetts at Amherst provides many resources for their faculty. Um, to help them in designing their programs and developing their programs to be inclusive and to um, be aware of diversity in the classroom. Um, Stanford University as well as Yale University and many, many others. Um, resources would include an um, ongoing committee leadership to develop a catalog and website, collect existing resources across the campus because what we do know is that much of this already exists. We have experts here on this campus and it's a matter of making it accessible to the faculty who need it. Um, library support, website design and support, and establish funding for the resources. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Ashley Malifon. I worked with Emma Montague and the subcommittee that explored the question, what role can arts play in our, in our diverse community? So our recommend, recommendation is to establish a university-wide arts diversity committee to assess the educational and cultural environment. Currently at the University of Texas, Austin, they have a fine arts diversity committee that is successful in advancing diversity strategies for the university through their fine arts and their arts programs. For resources, um, what this recommendation requires is university endorsement for key stakeholders to come around the table and devote some energy to this critical topic. Hello, my name is Dana Buhuniak and I'm representing the Students with Children subcommittee. And so one of our recommendations is to develop a needs assessment for students with children to better understand what their needs are as far as housing and child care and academic support at URI. Um, our committee had a lot of conversations about what we perceive to be a lack of policies and services and supports for pregnant and parenting students. And so a needs assessment would be a starting place to start to develop some of these support services for those students. Um, as far as resources, the idea was brought up to have an intern within the Women's Center who would be responsible for developing and implementing this needs assessment. Um, so some funding support for that, as well as access to surveying instruments and that technological support to implement the uh, assessment. Our second recommendation is to create a resource website for pregnant students and students with children. That would include campus and community resources, family-friendly events, and pertinent policies in addition to other things. Um, some benchmarking, the University of Minnesota, University of Michigan, and University of Missouri all have very comprehensive websites that include a variety of supports um, for pregnant and parenting students and all in one place, so very easy to access. Um, as far as resources, again, looking for funding for an intern, so that same intern who would be working on implementing a needs assessment could also work on developing a website, um, so looking for some funding support from that, as well as access to ongoing technological assistance as far as keeping the website up and running and up to date. Good afternoon, my name is Brianna Sacucci, and along with Myrlis Bustos, uh, we worked on the subcommittee for recruitment and retention of multicultural and low-income students at URI. 
The subcommittee's first recommendation uh, was to address the issue of needing more scholarship opportunities for multicultural and low-income students other than the talent development program. The subcommittee recommends that um, the Community Equity and Diversity Office collaborates with um, enrollment services and admissions to re-examine the distribution of merit versus need-based aid. We also recommend looking at some of our peer institutions, benchmarking, um, discovered that James Madison University has a Centennial Scholars Program. Students are eligible based on their FAFSA information and their Virginia resident status. These students are given full tuition, housing, and fees for four years and have to maintain a GPA of 3.0. North Dakota State University and the University of Wyoming also have various scholarships for multicultural and low-income students that we could use for examples. <clears throat> To address the issue of retention of multicultural and low-income students, the subcommittee recommends a comprehensive support program that includes peer and faculty mentoring. Again, James Madison University, with their Centennial Scholar Program, um, assigns not only peer mentors, but faculty mentor relationships and academic mentors for the students in that program. The University of New Hampshire has the Connect Program, which assigns first-year multicultural students a peer mentor. Resources will include collaboration between departments and funding for mentoring programs and activities. Thank you. Hello again. I'm Brianne Nepton, and I work with the Committee on Recruitment and Retention of Underrepresented Faculty at URI. This subcommittee came up with two recommendations, uh, the first being, quite simply, we need to recruit more diverse faculty. This is obviously a very involved process, however, with many elements, but we feel that there are two things that can be done and done well in order to begin the process of making this a reality. First, it's necessary to create a comprehensive web page regarding faculty searches. This web page would house information that allows URI to maintain inclusive search committees, search committees that are diverse, that are complete from the beginning and are trained in best practices for recruiting a diverse faculty. The second relates to dual career hires. We should be providing information on available networks for spouses or partners to find employment. The universities of Virginia and Connecticut provide comprehensive web pages that provide an excellent model that we could do here. As for providing more information on dual careers, the University of Virginia also has a very good website that we can model. In order to do all of this, we'll need to ne will be necessary to currently audit what we have, including the advanced web pages. Once we know what we have, we can begin to update and create new information where necessary. At that point, we can bring on staff to create and maintain a new web page that would be hopefully linked to the CED and the human resources web pages. <coughs> Our second recommendation is to create a support network for diverse faculty. Specifically, work should be done to create more opportunities for both social and professional interactions. There should be a mentoring system in place for new, for new hires. Departments should be educated on the needs related to having a diverse faculty. Of course, we want to see these items become part of the structure here at URI it will be necessary for us to better utilize the resources in the structure we already have. The University of Connecticut's Work Life website links to an affiliated group called UCAN, UConn Area Newcomers Network. This site itself is a bit rudimentary, but it's an example of what could be done by a more formalized networking group. And there are faculty that are interested in seeing this happen, and they could be tapped to get this ball rolling. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Mam, and myself along with John Carl Cruz led the subcommittee for the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer Visibility and Center Outreach. The original name of the subcommittee was uh, the Rhode Island Same-Sex Marriage Considerations for Students, Faculty and Staff but through the conversations in our committee, it really wants to focus on the visibility of the LGBTQ community at URI and its allies. 
So our first recommendation is to develop a web-based list of out LGBTQ faculty, staff, and students at URI. Um, this will be housed in the LGBTQ Center's uh, website, and I think the best way to understand what this list will do will be, uh, I will read the preliminary mission statement that the committee has uh, developed. The mission of you are, and the name of the list is actually going to be you are out at URI. So the mission of you are out at URI is to create a visible support network of out lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer students, faculty, and staff members at the University of Rhode Island. This network will serve to provide opportunities for networking, resource sharing, and mentorship for those individuals who identify within the URI LGBTQ community. By fostering a community of diversity and inclusion, this list serves to demonstrate strength in numbers so that individuals feel supported at URI. Uh, institutions that have a list uh, are Syracuse University, University of California, San Diego, uh, University of California, San Francisco, University of Delaware, University of Houston, where our convener originally came from, and we got the, list, uh, the idea of the list, and the University of Maryland. Uh, and the resources we will need is just the staff time commitment to uh, develop, upkeep, and uh, collect the names uh, for the list. Our second recommendation is to showcase outreach initiatives of LGBTQ center programs and services, such as safe zone trainings for student leaders of Greek organizations and athletes. One of the examples that I would list is uh, in the fall of 2013, the uh, LGBTQ Center will be doing a safe zone training for first year athletes. Uh, the only resources needed for this is just the staff time for website development upkeep to post the uh, safe zone and outreach that the center does. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jen O'Neill, and I worked with Joe Mercadante on the Gender Inclusion on Campus Committee. We worked very closely with the LGBTQ Center. Um, our first recommendation is to offer safe zone training as a component to all of the existing first year seminar, the URI 101 classes. Um, so at this point, we're not sure if it would be kind of an additional homework assignment that the students would need to do and then come back and write a reflection paper on exactly how that would work. Um, but there are no other institutions that we could find that have this as a component to their first year seminar classes. So this would certainly put us at the front of that. Um, to, in order to do this, we would need safe zone facilitators, which the center already has quite a few trained to be able to accommodate that, um, and then just the workshop materials. Our second recommendation is to allow students to change their name to their preferred names on university records. So currently there's a handful of institutions that allow this, um, notably the University of Massachusetts Amherst and the University of Vermont allow students who haven't changed their legal name to still be able to change it on things like their, class, uh, their email addresses, the class rosters, things like that. Um, this has already begun um, being worked on a little bit here by the higher administration. Um, and the problem really is working with PeopleSoft to accommodate those changes. Um, but there are a few other institutions that have been able to do this using PeopleSoft themselves. We'll work closely with them. Um, and then just some additional funding and training for staff members who also use those databases that will need to know to refresh them in case students have changed their names on rosters. Our third recommendation is to create a map of gender neutral bathrooms on campus. And it's also been brought to the center's attention that there's quite a few bathrooms on campus that do not lock or do not secure properly, um, which is certainly a privacy issue for everyone on campus. Uh, there's quite a few institutions that have bathroom maps on campus, um, whether it's just a simple list on the website or it's an actual map. One school had a Google map that you could kind of pinpoint the specific locations. Uh, the University of New Hampshire also includes on their map all of their ADA compliance, so it tells you the width of bathroom stall doors and if there's an elevator to get to it, things like that. Um, so we would actually need volunteers or staff members to walk around campus to actually count out the bathrooms that are gender neutral or ones that could be transformed into gender neutral bathrooms um, to find out if there are any broken, broken mechanisms that need to be fixed. We need the help of facilities to go ahead and fix all of those um, and then someone to develop a map which may take additional time and resources. Our fourth recommendation and last one is to create healthcare options for transgender student faculty and staff here at URI. Um, currently, this upcoming fall, there will be 36 colleges around the country that offer gender confirmation surgery as part of their student healthcare plan. There's another 25 college, colleges that cover hormone-only um, therapy for students and 20 that cover some of that for their employees. 
Um, so in order to do this, we would like to have some additional paperwork, um, some brochures in health services to give some information about resources on campus and in the area to place in health services. Um, we'd like to do some additional training for the health services staff. And we would need staff to work with HR to negotiate with the insurance company to be more inclusive of this community. I guess in the end, so thank you. <laughs> So I'd just like to um, ask the group to give the students one more round of applause for the work that they did. <laughs> they did an awful lot of work um, organizing subcommittee meetings, uh, taking notes, drafting PowerPoints, doing reports, um, and for many of them, their last class ever um, in grad school was on Tuesday night, and they stayed an extra hour and a half past the end of class to make sure that this PowerPoint looked perfect for you. So um, they took this pretty seriously. So I appreciate all the hard work and energy that they put into it. Um, I also want to recognize anyone who's in the audience who participated in one of the subcommittees. How many of you in the audience was a subcommittee member? Raise your hand. So let's give these folks a round of applause. So in the spirit of open spaces, where everyone has an opportunity to share their voice, um, we are going to end our session today um, with kind of a little twist. So instead of opening up the floor for questions and answers, um, which is pretty typical where a few people who are comfortable um, speaking in loud groups, uh, large groups can do, um, we have decided to, to do an alternate um, way to gather your feedback. So we're going to do two things. First, we have some students who have some forms um, where you can write your feedback, and I'll have them pass them around now. So you can share uh, some general comments on those forms, and we'll take with the, those with us today. Then we're also going to ask you um, to look around the room. On the walls are the names of each of the subcommittees. Um, and we're going to give you the rest of the time, and we have this room reserved until about 3.30, to break out into small groups and give some feedback in, on those particular recommendations that you heard for each of those small committees. So the students and the CED representative who worked on those subcommittees will kind of move around the room um, to where the sign is, and you can offer feed feedback in small groups. So that's how we're going to end today. And Naomi says she wants to say one more thing, so I'm going to um, let her get up on the stage. <laughs> There has been one person who has done a phenomenal amount of work with the development of the 20,000 Voices, who has been conspicuously quiet today. And I thought she would come up and say a few words, but come on up, Ian. Ian uh, and I have to apologize to Eileen Orobone because I stressed her out an hour before uh, it was time for us to do this. And I said, we have to, have to, have to acknowledge Annie M. Because Annie M. started at North, oh, that's another, no, yeah, she did start at Northeastern. We went to North, we worked at Northeastern University together in a prior life. And then, ironically, we started began working here at the University of Rhode Island on the exact same day. And if you don't know who Annie M. is, Annie M. is a coordinator who works in the LGBTQ Center, a full-time, fully functional center that provided over 42 programs and initiatives this year alone. And in addition to doing her job, being new to the institution, she stepped up and said, I will lead the effort. I will be the chief cook and bottle washer and the one who makes the emails and sends out the notices and coordinates meetings and sets the agenda and makes sure that there, are, that there is you know, PowerPoint and electricity and live streaming and food and cookies and carrots and juice and <laughs> the provost and you know, the president and whoever else is in the room. She made sure it happened and it required a lot of work. And so I just want to say a really, really special thanks to Annie I would just like to say um, that I'm really, really humbled um, to receive this, and I, I, I just want to say that 
this has been one of the most life-changing experiences of my career in higher education as far as working with everyone here at URI throughout the semester on these fantastic initiatives. I have a lot of hope and excitement of where it's gonna, going to go and I would also like to say that this day could definitely not have happened without a lot of collaboration and a lot of hard work by a lot of people, um, especially our class who did such fantastic work on all of these initiatives and <clears throat> provided so much knowledge and information and things that are really gonna move forward. And I'd like to let you all know that I'll be sure to make sure that we are looking into that for the future so that all of your work will continue um, in various facets, however that may be that we work it out. Um, I'd also like to just say a special thank you to Naomi, of course, who has been really um, uh, important as far as behind making sure this was an inclusive process from the start of how we went about this. Of course, to Amory Vaccaro, who has had her class here and been instrumental in making sure that this was truly an experiential journey and an educational one, in addition to um, talking about diversity and inclusion as well. Um, I'd also like to thank Dr. Annie Russell, who's uh, in the back of the room there. Um, Annie is um, not only a friend to me, but also my supervisor and the director of the LGBTQ Center, and she put countless, countless hours <clears throat> into this, uh, this opportunity for all of us and has worked uh, hard on a lot of the subcommittees as well as well as being on the initial committee. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if she's here, but Melissa Boyd Colvin, I would like to say, um, was an amazing um, person for us as well since she facilitated the conversations we initially had on the 20,000 Voices opening event. <clears throat> so I would just also like to thank anyone who helped with reserving space like Sherry Davis or, or <laughs> if you helped to um, be on a subcommittee um, or if you were on multiple subcommittees, which I know a lot of people did. So there was just so much work involved in this. So I, I won't take too much more time so that we can all get working again in our, in our little group discussions. And, and I really hope you take this as an opportunity to, to give us your feedback so we can make, make sure that URI propels itself into an amazing, very rich and diverse future. Thank you.